quick note before the actual video starts. Please stay until the end as I will be making a giveaway celebrating my 500 subscribers. Hi! In this video I am going to explain the different texture maps involved on a PVR material. I am not going to talk in depth about them, just explain the basics of each of them and their function. I am going to talk about base color, ambient occlusion, height map, normal map, roughness and metallic. Learning the function of each map is extremely important when using a PVR workflow. So we are going to start with the base color. The base color map is the map that well indicates the color of things. For example, if you have a brick texture, you can apply that texture to the base color of a material and then use the material in an object. A base color could also be a solid color or a gradient. In this example, we start with a blank material, then we add the base color that you are seeing right now and the end result looks more like this. You might find different ways to name base color. Some might call it diffuse, others might call it albedo. Some people make the difference between albedo and base color, saying that the base color is the rough texture, being the albedo the texture after a process of removing shadows and highlights from the base texture to have a more cohesive digital lighting. And that is the reason why taking pictures of textures while the sky is cloudy is suggested. That way you don't have any harsh shadows or highlights in your texture. Going to the next map, we have ambient occlusion. We might differentiate between three kinds of shadows. A cast shadow, which is when an object blocks a light and cast shadow on another object. A form shadow, which indicates the shapes of the object as it gets away from the light. And ambient occlusion. That happens when two areas make contact or are very close to each other, making a smooth shadow between them. Don't overlook this map as it will bring a lot of depth to your object. An ambient occlusion map is mostly white indicating the soft shadows with a black or grey color depending on the intensity. Hate maps are black and white maps, going from pure black to pure white, and the greys between them. Middle grey causes no visible effect on the material. Instead, if you have a white circle on the map, it will simulate a bump. If you have a black circle, it will simulate a hole. Depending on how dark or light the circle is relative to the middle gray, the intensity of the bump or hole will vary. Hate maps are useful for making scars, scratches, pimples, terrains, and everything that has depth to it. It might be obvious at this point, but the point of using these maps is to save resources. If instead of using a map like this, you were to make the bump with pure vertices, it will require a lot of more power for your computer to handle that in real time. Here on the example, the black part of the base color goes inside with the height map, while the yellow triangle stays basically at the same place, with some variation to give it a little bit of texture. The difference between a normal map and a height map might be difficult to understand at first. The maps themselves are very different, being the height map black and white, and the normal map a colorful map with greens, blues, reds, and purples. The main difference is that while the height map indicates up and down, the normal map indicates the angle of the surface. The angles are represented on the normal sphere, being the middle a surface pointing directly at the camera. If you don't know what a normal is, a normal is basically an arrow that comes perpendicular from a face, indicating the orientation of a face on a 3D model. So let me give you an example. 
So I have this hard surface normal map, this one here, and as you can see, we have the colors of the normal sphere. As we said previously, the angle corresponds to a color on the normal sphere, right? So let's see what is going to happen. Let me bring this. I have a green here that will correspond to this green, which is going to have an angle, something like that. Then we have here something here. Then it goes like this. And then like this. The bottom. And the other face. And the middle is this part here. All right. Now let's see what will happen when we paint this. There we go. And as you can see, that is exactly what happened. If I rotate the light, you will see the faces. And of course, this is on a plane. Normal maps are indeed very powerful, as you can actually indicate angles, which is something that you can do only with head maps. Side note, you can also combine a normal map and a head map into a single normal map. In this example of Suzanne, we have both the normal map and the head map enabled on the material. A last thing about normal maps is that you might find two kinds of normal maps. DirectX normal maps and OpenShield normal maps. Some programs like Blenders use OpenShield normal maps while others, like Unreal Engine, use DirectX normal maps. The only difference between these two is that the green channel or the white channel is inverted. If you use a normal map and it doesn't look right, try inverting the green channel of the map. The example that I gave you was on an OpenShell normal map. Now if I take this sphere to a photo editing software, in my case Affinity Photo, I go to the channels, I go to the green channel, I press Ctrl I to invert the green channel, I turn on the channels again, and now you see that they are different. Now if I have this here, I'm going to put it here, we can go here on Softens Painter, Edit, Pressure Configuration, Normal Map Format, we change it to direct X and now you will see that the colors on my hard surface normal had changed. Now it's the other way around corresponding to the direct X normal map sphere. But the effect is basically the same one. We come back to the black and white maps. The roughness map is very simple. The less roughness an object has, the more it reflects the environment. The more rough an object is, it reflects less. A roughness of 1, or pure white, practically doesn't reflect anything, while a roughness of 0, or pure black, makes the object completely reflective. Roughness maps are really useful to indicate surface detail. With roughness variations, you can, for example, indicate fingerprints on glass, or a wet metal surface. Here you can see the difference between different roughness values. Our final map is the metallic map. This is also a black and white map, being black non-metallic, also known as the electric, and white being metal. In general, materials in the real world are dielectric or metallic. So the value of the metallic map should be pure white or pure black. You do have the freedom as an artist to use a middle gray if you feel like it. The reason of this is out of the scope of this video, but I will leave you some resources on the description if you want to read a little bit more about the technicalities of the PVR workflow. For now, you should know that white means metallic and black means non-metallic. And this right here is how our final monkey looks like and with what values. 
For this case, I deactivated the hate map as I thought it looked better only with the normal map. So, those are the basics of the main maps of a PBR material. There are more information and more maps that we could talk about, like vector displacement maps, emission maps, but those are more specific. If you want to read more about it, check out the links on the description. Now going to the giveaway. Recently my channel has reached 500 subscribers, thank you very much, and for that reason I am giving away 5 copies of each of my courses except the last one I released. There are going to be 10 winners, so 2 courses per winner, and to participate just go to the link on the description and you will follow a list of instructions to win more entries. The course not included in the giveaway is a course I released recently. It is a course where I teach to make pixel art tilesets with pixel edit. We learn the point of using tilesets, the software pixel edit, and then we work on two projects. A side view video game where we start making the tiles, then we make some variations and some props, also background, and a top thumb video game similar to the last one but on a different perspective. We learn how to quickly make the tile sets for the environment, we make some variations and we add some props to the scene. If you want to support me, you can buy that course and also the other courses included in the giveaway. Links will be on the description as my MIDI keyboard recently died, that will help me out by anyone and hopefully help yourself with education. So that's the end of this video, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, give it a like, and share the video. If you have any doubts or any suggestion, please comment down the video. Bye.